good afternoon. Um, in today's episode, we're going to talk about my go bag. Go bags, go box, go bag. As you know, I'm into doing the summits on the air and backpacking is part of that hobby and uh, really enjoy that. So when it came time to uh, build a go box for Aries, Amateur Radio Emergency Response, um, I decided to put it in a backpack. Why not? CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. I built a Winlink portable station uh, that's completely self-contained in this backpack. So, as part of the mission before uh, for Aries, Amateur Radio Emergency Response, we support the San Diego County uh, hospitals and other agencies during an emergency. Um, most likely, if there's an event, especially a seismic event, there won't be any communications. You can't use your cell phone in even the most minor um, event. For instance, a small power outage where everything is still working, um, the cell phone's uh, towers become completely saturated and unusable. So we would deploy to hospitals, emergency operations center, um, the blood bank has its own crew, um, and wherever we're needed to set up communications to not only handle traffic between uh, hospitals and other agencies and hospitals to hospitals. So one of the most effective ways uh, to do that is using WinLink. WinLink in its most basic form is just email via radio. Um, here's a picture I'll put up here and um, it's using your radio to instead of the internet to move your email traffic uh, to some other station. There, there's a, three different things that could happen. A, uh, the most, hopefully, the best one is you go from your radio, uh, your station, to a gateway station that has internet access, and then it's put on the internet. No problem, goes into the WinLink servers and it's routed to any WinLink station or any other email box for that matter. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward, you get email on your phone. If that gateway doesn't have internet access, um, if it's been told where there is internet access, it'll actually forward your email to another station uh, that has internet access. It may take a couple of hops all via radio before it gets onto the internet. Lastly, we can route email traffic directly to another station. So station to station, send a WinLink message, which is nothing more than email. We have a whole bunch of forms, uh, standard forms that are used by FEMA uh, to communicate with all the various different agencies, um, Red Cross to do health and welfare, health and welfare uh, reports, etc. So that's WinLink. Um, that's the current mission. And instead of a go box, we're using a go bag. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the pack. Um, this is from 511. It's a really well made backpack. It's a tactical 24. Uh, most backpacks like this you find in hunting goods stores, uh, sporting goods stores, gun shows. They can't put up with the amount of weight and abuse that you get from this thing, especially the weight. I've had backpacks from gun shows and um, sporting goods stores that looked really cool, uh, lots of pockets and stuff. They get torn apart when you start putting any kind of load in them outside of like a jacket and some snacks. So um, this is a really well-made backpack. Um, on the front strap, uh, very well padded. Uh, I got a place for an HT here. Um, I've got a notepad uh, strapped on here. Uh, that's a riding in the rain backpack, uh, a riding pad. And then coming around to the outside here, I got a couple of accessory pockets here. Uh, two pockets for an HT. Um, got my little. Um, um, you can use pretty much any cheap little thing here, but it's nice to have, so I can run a couple of HDs on here, no problem. And then uh, a couple other things here, a quick access uh, medical bag and a um, uh, moldy tool, which is super handy. Um, and then I never want to be left without a hat. I don't want to grab this thing and not have a hat, especially being a bald guy. You're going to get fried in SoCal. <laughs> and then you'll be you'll be uh, really needing to go to the hospital. All right, so um, let's take a look inside. I'm gonna pull out all the major components of the Winlink station. So 
let's open up the main compartment here. We're going to start with a radio. This is a Yesu um, FD817. Um, you'll probably notice this from a lot of summits on the air activations. Um, I don't have a whole lot of videos of it, but a lot of guys use these. I've used it. Um, it's a great shack in the box because it does HF and VHF. So this is currently set up for packet radio, so we'll put that over here. Um, then the next thing, the next major component is, uh, of course, laptop. So this is a very inexpensive laptop. It was a refurb with an SSD drive in it, just powerful enough to run Winlink. So it was a very economical way for me to set up a Winlink station. So we'll put that right here. Um, certainly you need an antenna for the radio. Um, this is a roll-up J-Pole. It's extremely effective. These things are really, really awesome. Um, I can easily connect from here into a Winlink station in Tijuana. So I'm a good 60 miles away. All right. So the <clears throat> next piece that you need to get from here to here is a uh, packet communicator. This is the packet communicator plus. It's the uh, TNC, terminal node controller uh, from Cantronics that will bridge from here into here and into here. Um, so that is the other piece. When you think about um, really WinLink, which is um, just email as we uh, just, um, talked about, really these are the main components. If you do HF WinLink, you'll just have a different box and maybe a different radio. Um, there are several different ways to go about it. There are several different protocols that can be used. It all depends on what the other station and gateway systems are using. All right, so um, we need to, to hook all of this stuff together and we need to power it. So let's talk about connecting it together first. Um, we'll need this to go from the radio um, to the TNC and then a USB cable to go from the laptop into the TNC. So now we have a complete link. We've brought all of these things together. Um, the next piece that we need, of course, we need lights. Uh, these are cute little lights that we can bolt on somewhere. Nothing ever happens during the day, right? No disaster happens during daylight hours. It always happens in the middle of the night. At least all the earthquakes I've been in. So we'll do that. Um, let's get some power out. This is um, a box that was put together by Impulse Electronics here, uh, here close, not too far from San Diego. Um, this is a 20 amp hour BioEno battery in here. I've also put a couple of accessories and the charger all fits in here just barely. So this is a neat little box, a uh, watertight Pelican box here, Pelican-like. Um, here we have power poles, um, a voltage, little output, and um, USB. So we can charge your phone, etc. Run other accessories. So we're going to put that in the back here. Um, of course, we're going to need to get from there to the radio. So we have batteries here and here, but not here. So we do need some kind of power to get uh, to run the little box there. And so we have a jumper that will go into a power distribution in it, which is nothing more than a bunch of power poles um, wired together. Uh, this particular one is the PowerWorks PDA. So um, we go from this into here, and then we can run, of course, multiple radios and other things out of here. But primarily, we start with this. Eventually, we'll need um, power going into the radio, which has already been configured with power poles instead of the standard Yesu plug. So this is kind of a neat little accessory that I added on there. Um, so this will get us power. And I think I've got a little dongle there for a GPS so I can easily send uh, location information out from there. I have a um, mouse in here. And then I have a charging unit for the, um, my radio, for my uh, uh, Anytone radios, which is going to be needed. Um, I'll eventually need power for the laptop. The laptop batteries only going to last for so long. Um, so we have a small inverter unit, it's really small, it's 300 watt uh, DC to AC power inverter and I've used this to power this. So we can go, uh, this will pretty much power the whole station. I'm not sure for how long, I haven't done a lot of measurements yet, I'm still working on that. 
but uh, I'll, I, can, I can be up for quite a while and if I'm deployed at a hospital or something I can at least uh, most very likely eventually get to um, their backup power uh, via some if it's an extension cord. So um, that's how we get power. Um, what else do I have in here in the main compartment? Um, mainly just accessories to um, plug power in here. I got the little transformer in here so I can plug that into my little inverter. Um, I have the ability, certainly I need some lighting, headlamp, and uh, some snacks, and the ability to um, clean water if I need to. Um, hopefully I have potable water, but if I don't, if I can get to some kind of water source, then I can get something to drink. If I was to deploy, I'd probably throw a, um, a couple of mountain house in here so I could be you know, completely self-sufficient. My objective would be to be completely self-sufficient as long as I can to put the least amount of load on the um, uh, facility that I'm trying to support. So, um, moving on, um, I do have paper for the printer. The printer is an Epson... Um, shoot it's it's a it's a little epson battery powered printer um works really really awesome i take it with me when i go to my summer home but i bring a little bit of extra paper for that the next thing here is uh charts for the san diego and, and surrounding areas so for situational awareness um some signage uh, contact information for my team um and then lastly for paperwork wise um a clipboard which is always really handy to be able to write on but more importantly the Aries communication plan um, this has all the, the uh, repeaters and various tactical frequencies that we would use in an event as well as a whole bunch of different forms uh, that we use uh, for communicating to different agencies. Uh, FEMA has put together a very standardized way of communicating within um, the FEMA system the more standards you have, the easier it is for everyone to communicate uh, together. So extremely important to have those. Um, we also use those if we need to exchange messages between facilities using voice. You may get your HT out and just contact another station and read the whole form off to them to communicate that message traffic. All right, so um, we've gone through those, pretty much all the pieces. I've got some various accessories in these side pockets, uh, for instance, converters um, for non, uh, I can run the HT without a battery, just plugging it in directly to power, um, as well as accessories for plugging a headset into this guy. Um, there's some additional accessories in this little pocket over here, um, a, a headset for my HT, uh, which can be very handy. Um, uh, some gloves, so I have some some surgical gloves, which aren't super clean, I mean, wouldn't be for surgery, obviously, but um, may, may come in very handy. Um, I have a second medical kit. This is my kind of go-to bag because I know this is going to have everything I need in it. Um, I use one of these to, if you might, uh, if you read my blog, uh, I basically crashed when I was on top of a mountain and I put a hole in my leg. So that was cool used everything in here that I needed to uh, patch myself up and then uh, hobble off the mountain back to the car and then eventually to the emergency room. So um, just a handy uh, another little aid bag that I know is good to go. Um, again I got the quick access one there on the outside. Um, got some work gloves in here. Um, if in an event you never know what you might find yourself doing unloading trucks, helping out, um, you'll be glad you have those. Also, if it gets a little bit chilly, it can get very cold here in San Diego in the winter. Um, so those might be enough to kind of get me by. Um, I have some sunscreen in here. Um, in SoCal, you don't want to be caught without sunscreen. You'll be burned alive. Uh, so I got some sunscreen. I think I've already shown you my hat. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a few little accessories here and there, but um, uh, so, some contact cards and... Uh, um, that's pretty much the Winlink go bag. Alrighty, so that is the Winlink station in a bag. Um, if you want more information about my Winlink setup, um, I did do a drawing that's uh, more or less a reference architecture that shows how all these components plug together. Um, also, you'll uh, see a picture here of a deployment uh, that I did 
and you'll see some uh, solar panels on there. I got two solar panels that plug together, go into a solar charge controller, and then I can run power into my um, battery at the same time I'm using it. So that's super handy. So if you want to check that out, go to hamninja.com slash winlink. And that will take you to that particular article that I wrote. Wrote. That will take you to the particular article that I wrote on my website. <laughs> I can't talk. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Um, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments. Uh, questions, put them in there. Um, if I don't know the answer, I'll find somebody who does. Um, like and subscribe if you want to see my ego get even bigger than it already is. Um, so, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this episode of uh, Ham Ninja. Not summits on the air. Wind links on the air. Till next time. Seventy three guys. <laughs>